Hello, I am Ahmad and in this video I'm going to explain how to calculate buckling load uh, for a simple beam under distributed load queue. If we check uh, Eurocode 1993-11, we will find out for bending moment capacity always we need to check the uh, lateral torsion of buckling. For this, we need to calculate M critical, which is uh, named critical bending moment. But in the code currently there is no equation how to calculate that. The main reason is that uh, uh, the, the critical bending moment is highly sensitive to the boundary conditions. If any kind of changes uh, are applied to boundary conditions, then the critical bending moment will be completely different. But there are some researches and also equations that can be used. Some of them are common for being used uh, for calculation of critical bending moment. In this video, I'm going to calculate first critical uh, or buckling load of a simple beam with uh, what we learned according to total potential energy that we had in this playlist. And after that, I will use RFM sticks for calculation of the critical load. And then I will use ANSYS um, for calculation. At the end, I will use one of the mainly uh, or commonly uh, used equations, how to calculate the critical bending moment, and we will compare these values together. Assume we have a beam, in this case I-beam, which is supported at both ends in vertical direction. Also assume that the situation is in a way that the rotation is prevented or constrained. So it means that we have a kind of fork support at both ends. If we look at the beam end, so we have a kind of fixed support at both ends about the longitudinal direction of the beam in terms of rotation. If we have the x, y, z axis, we can say that at both ends, at x equals 0 and at x equals L, V about x is 0. So it means that it's completely fixed at both ends in terms of rotation. But about y, it is free. So if we look at it from the side as we sketched, and it's under the load Q, so it is free to rotate at both ends. Also, in the other direction about zeta, it says it's also free to buckle or bend. So in terms of uh, buckling calculation, we have to uh, form the total potential energy equation according to the uh, possible deformations that might happen for this after buckling. So if we increase the load Q, uh, then it starts to destabilize the cross section. So if uh, you remember, we had this in the former videos in this playlist. Here we have this direction, which is V. And then we have transfer direction which is omega and also we have the rotation about the longitudinal axis which is called phi so if we increase the load what type of buckling we would expect so let's have a look on half of this beam zeta axis y and x and after the formation we have omega and b so if it starts to buckle then it is rotating about its, its longitudinal axis and also starts to bend about the zeta axis so we have two motions together uh, one is rotation about the longitudinal axis and the other one is 
bending about the vertical axis and also the uh, coupling of these two. So now let's just think about the transverse deformation. If we look at the cross section from the top view, the beam is not restrained about zeta axis. As a result, the deformation after losing its stability will be like a sinus function or half sinus. But if we look at it from the torsion uh, about the longitudinal axis, at both ends, it will be completely fixed about axis. How we can sketch or how we can understand that. If we assume that it's a just line, then both ends will be completely zero. So rotation at this end will be zero. Rotation at this end will be also zero. And then it rotates and in the middle it will be coming back to its so it's a schematic a sketch of how the rotation will happen. So if we look at this as omega, this is half sinus. And if we look at this from the x-axis, we can see that it's cosinus. Now we need to write down the equation in terms of x for omega and b. So omega as a function of x will be a function of a times sinus pi x divided by l. So just checking that equations are valid. x equals 0. Omega x will be 0. x equals l. Omega l or omega 0. Omega l will be 0. And x equals to l over 2. Omega half l will be a. So it means that it comes from zero to a maximum value and then coming back to zero. Now for phi, we have different equation, starting with b as parameter, then cosinus 2 pi x divided by l minus 1. It doesn't matter if b becomes negative or positive. Let's check if it is valid. For x equals 0, b will be 0. For x equal l, b will be 0. And for x equals to l divided by 2, it will be minus b. Also, we can check if the equation is valid in terms of rotation or the angle. So if we take the first derivative of omega, it will be cosinus at 0 and L, it will be non-zero value. And if we take the first derivative of V at uh, 0 and L and middle, it will be zero. It means that it's turning from one angle to the other. So these two equations are going to be used for approximation and writing down the uh, total potential energy. We can write down the total potential energy equation. Pi will be 1 over 2 from 0 to L EIZ, second derivative of omega power by 2 dx plus 1 over 2 from 0 to L GIT. B prime x power by 2 dx plus 1 over 2 integration from 0 to L EI warping times second derivative of B dx minus integration from 0 to L M y x times B x first derivative times omega prime x dx and plus sigma 1 over 2 t at each position times phi at that position. 
So we had this in the post buckling video for lateral torsional buckling. So these are items that we need to consider when we are going to calculate the total potential energy. Already we have omega x and we have phi of x. We need to calculate my and also we need to calculate the torsion in each position. If we have a beam under Q with the length of L, the support reaction will be QL divided by 2. And at the distance of X, we can make the cut and calculate the bending moment. So MX will be QL divided by 2 times X minus QX square divided by 2. This is bending moment about Y axis. Coming back to the equation, we have E is constant, IZ is constant, we have omega, we have G, we have IT, torsional constant, warping constant, E we have rotational approximation equation we have now my of x and then this tx is the torsion at each distance from the uh, beginning of the beam if we consider a tiny length of the beam in the longitudinal direction let's say dx and if we look at it from the cross section Assume that the load is applied not in the center, somewhere here. So Q is the distributed load and we consider a tiny length dx of the beam. And here is the center of the cross section and the distance we can assume it's A. So if the section is rotated with the angle of B, the center point is here and we have the location of the load with the distance of A. Now here, this is Q times dx. And if the angle of rotation is going to be phi, then this angle is also phi. We have two components, Q dx cosinus phi. And we have the other component, Q dx sinus phi. Now we can see that Q dx cosinus phi is, take, is uh, not going to make any torsion. But Q dx sinus phi is making the torsion about the longitudinal axis. So Tx will be Q times dx times sinus phi times A. And from the strain energy theory, we know that if we have E and phi from zero to phi, then the area will be the energy. So it will be one over two times T times phi. Coming back to our equation, here we have one over two Tx Vx. As far as it's going to be a distributed load, it is distributed all over the length so we can just change this summation to integration from 0 to L. So this is the total equation we have. Let's put it in our next page and substitute what we have. So here is our equation. We can change this to integration. Now omega x is a times sinus pi x over L. Bx is B times cosinus 2 pi x over L minus 1. Myx is QL divided by 2x minus QX square divided by 2. And T, so dx is the 
differential of x representing that this is a very tiny element so tx will be q sinus phi times a and as far as sinus phi is very small we can assume that it's phi so it will be q times vx times a that's all so we have all the elements here it would be easier if we go through matcat and write down the equation uh, for the calculation now i can bring the main equation first and also the functions first i write the function x and l and a omega then it is a times sinus y times x divided by l then phi as a function of x and l and b will be b times cosinus 2 pi x divided by l minus 1 then the bending moment about y-axis as a function of x it will be q times l divided by 2 times x minus q times x power by 2 divided by 2 and finally t as a function of x and l and b and q and a x q and a and l and b so here m is also a function of x and l and so this will be q times x and l and b times we are done a sinus pi x divided by l cosinus 2 pi x divided by l minus 1 q l divided by 2 x minus q x s square 2 q x phi times a these are the main functions and here i can write the total potential energy as a function of because it is taking the integration then there is no uh, x anymore a and b and l and e and g and i z and i t and i w and q and a what else so if there is something else then we will see in the final results so it will be one divided by two times integration from zero to l as far as we have the distributed load in the whole or entire length of the beam then there is no or we do not have any changes in the loading we don't need to for example go to from 0 to l divided by 2 and then continue and this is x so i can just copy this for plus plus 1 2 3 minus and plus this one doesn't have have 1 over 2 and here it will be e times iz times second derivatives of by respect of x power by 2 the other one is git g times it times first derivative of v power by 2 the next one e okay i can bring this e times warping constant times second derivative power by 2 of v second derivative of v and the next one will be m y x so better to have the this is for this uh, multiplication of functions derivative so i will go with derivative by respect of x and here i will put m y x and l and q times x and l and b then it should be multiplied by 
first derivative of omega and finally t times done let's check eiz second derivative of omega by respect of x power by 2 git first derivative of v power by 2 second derivative of v m times v first derivative times first derivative of omega and then t times v okay good so now we need to take the to find out q critical we need to uh, take the first derivative of pi by respect of the parameters a and b so here just taking the derivative of this function good and then by respect of b so to have the solution for q we need to form the matrix for these two equations because each one should be zero uh, to have non-trivial answers then the determinant of the coefficients should be zero for that it's easier to make the matrix as a function of then we do not have a and b anymore so here it will be these parameters equals to then the first will be the coefficient of this uh, first equation i just need to remove a and the second one should be the coefficient of b the same goes here here we can see that for a we should have the same because the matrix should be symmetric uh, and here is here is our equation and if we write down to force this determinant of this matrix to be zero then we can calculate the value of q so here it is easier if we go through one cross section for example hea 200 so now let's write down the parameters iz is 13.36 10 power by 6 millimeter 4 and then i t is 204.3 times 10 power by 3 millimeter 4 and warping constant is 1055.80 times 10 power by 6 millimeter power by 6 e is 210 gigapascal nu 0.3 for a steel and then g is e divided by 2 times 1 plus nu and we can assume that the length of the, the beam is 4 meters now as far as we have these parameters as uh, the values given for HEA 200 we can just have the solution based on two parameters A and Q which will be the determinant of this matrix now the easiest way is to plot for that let's have the values for Q let's go to 200 for now let's uh, we can check later if it is sufficient or not and here we can go to the plot solution of q and for now let's assume that the load is exactly in the center line of the cross section so here we can see that still we need to add this let's go to 500 okay 350 okay good so it means that the uh buckling load for this beam four meters with the boundary conditions that we explained critical or buckling load will be something around 230 let's have a vertical marker and here 
it's about 230 if the load is exactly in the center line now let's assume that it's on the edge HEA 200 is with the height of 190 so if we put it on the bottom Z will be or A will be positive as we assumed so it will be 95 millimeter and here we can see that it is uh, now greater value so 277 and also we can add if we put it on the top which is destabilizing of the cross section here we can see that it is with the minimum value 189 or 188 so this is uh, the calculation of critical load let's have these uh, written notes in our document and here the most important part to be visible now if we come back to here to check how the graph shows so this means that the load is applied to the top of the section and the blue shows that the beam is loaded from the center line and the black one is that the load is applied to the bottom so in the softwares that might be used, this condition is written as the stabilizing condition. This is neutral and this is stabilizing. And you can see the reason. So if we put the load on the top, the load is in the compressive flange. So as a result, it would buckle sooner. And let's assume that this load is something around 188 the next one the load uh, is 230 kilonewton per meter and the last one 277 kilonewton per meter. with these values we can calculate the critical bending moment of the cross section let's calculate so condition of destabilizing m critical will be q l squared divided by eight Q is 188 kilonewton per meter times 4 meters a square divided by 8, which will be 376 kilonewton. Then, if it is in neutral, M critical will be with the value of 230, 460 kilonewton meter. And if the load is in the stabilizing condition, 277. 554 kilonewton so this is the critical moment uh, or the minimum load that can be applied until the beam starts to buckle this is the end of this video we uh, studied how to calculate the buckling load of a simple beam under distributed load we assume that uh, both ends of the beam are in the situation that they cannot rotate or we have a kind of fork constraint so it doesn't rotate about the longitudinal axis but the beam was completely free to bend about the weak axis so we put the load on the top in the middle and on the bottom of the beam and we calculated the critical bending moment in the next video i will start to model the same beam with the ANSYS model and we'll go through the uh, calculation and compare our results with what we got here in this hand calculation. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.